Welcome to our Top Tips videos on musculoskeletal examination. Following on from the success of our ophthalmology clips, Rotherham GPs have asked us to produce some five minute clips uh, on clinical examination of various aspects of the musculoskeletal system. These will be suitable for GPs in your coffee breaks. You may find they're also useful for teaching medical students or your registrars. Uh, I'm delighted to say that we have two of our local consultants who have agreed to help us, and that's Mr. Kevin Wembridge, who will cover lower limb and back examination, and Mr. Alex Cochita, who will cover upper limb and examination. Enjoy. Uh, hello, and this video will be uh, discussing examination of the hip. Uh, obviously it's important to take a full uh, history, uh, particularly looking at any previous issues that the patient may have had with their hip, particularly in childhood or any previous surgery. Uh, the general health is also very important, uh, but also of how it's affecting the patient's life, uh, particularly their social life or their work life. Uh, this can have a major impact on uh, how they perceive things. Uh, we will now move on to examining the hip. So examination of the hip starts with uh, having your patient uh, properly exposed and standing up. We want to look for alignment both from the front, uh, looking for alignment in the sagittal plane um, and looking for any uh, rotation there may be on the patella, particularly if they're uh, in pointing. Turn to the side please. We want to look from the side, check for any signs of scarring here from possibly a hip, hip surgery and around uh, higher up around the pelvis if they've had childhood surgery and turn around to the back please and also over the back to check on uh, gluteal muscle bulk and there could be, potentially be scars around the back. I'd like to turn back please. Having done that, we need to see the patient walk so we can examine their gait. So if you'd just like to walk uh, forwards for me and then turn around and come back and keep walking until I ask you to stop. We're looking for the cadence, the stride length, which part of the foot hits the floor first and any abnormalities. Essentially if there's an asymmetrical gait, there is an issue with it. If you could just walk from side to side as well, please. We need to look from the back and the front and from both sides, as uh, subtle differences in the gait may be apparent only from looking at, at the side. Okay, stop, thank you. We also need to check uh, Trendelenburg's test, which is a, a, a test for abductor uh, function. Uh, it's best if we probably stand sideways to see this. If you can turn and face me, please, thank you. Put your hands on the anterior superior ilex spines of your patient and ask them to rest their hands on your forearms. And if you could take all your weight on your left leg by kicking your right leg up behind you but keeping it straight. Thank you. This uh, test tests for abductor weakness on the hip, uh, on the side that's being stood on, so in this case the left hand side. So any uh, weakness would be shown by increased pressure of uh, the left arm of a, the right arm onto my left arm. I'd like to put your foot back down. Having done that and uh, checked the, the patient out, we'd also like to look at their shoes properly to make sure there's no signs of uh, increased wear both uh, on the outside or if there's any sign of uh, special inserts on the inside. We'd also check for uh, any walking aids such as walking sticks, wheelchairs, uh, crutches, uh, gaiters, uh, uh, splints, etc and then we'll progress to examination on the couch. So having examined the patient standing up, I'm now going to check again to make sure there's no tenderness over the greater trochanter and also on the inguinal ligament and also check for any scars that I might not have been able to see previously. I'll then check the neurovascular status, making sure that the patient can feel me touching you on uh, both sides of his legs and it feels the same and normal all the way up and also check the pulses on both sides both the posterior tibia and the dorsalis pallidus to ensure that uh, there's good blood flow. Well then in extension, just check for tone of the leg. Clearly we'd normally examine both legs, uh, but uh, for the purposes of this video, we'll just demonstrate on one. And then I want to do Thomas's test by putting my hand under the patient's back and asking the patient to pull both, the knees, both his knees up to his chest. Can you just hold onto this leg for me, please? And allow this one to come right the way down. 
This should go flat. If there's any bend in this, it uh, shows a fixed flexion deformity um, of the hip. Okay, just relax that down. Just lift his leg up for me, please. Bend it for me. Okay, so he has good flexion of his hip. Turn your uh, ankle inwards and then back out. And again, we'll check those rotations. So external rotation, sorry, internal rotation. Internal rotation should come to approximately 30 degrees and external to 40 degrees. Popping the leg back down and stabilizing the pelvis with the other hand. Could you pull this leg out towards me? Right the way out. Okay. This comes out to about 45 degrees normally for abduction and then popping the leg over the side of the couch and stabilizing the pelvis. On this side, we can check adduction, which is usually about 15 to 20 degrees. Put this leg up for me. Having checked the uh, range of movement, we are now in a position to be able to look at the length of the limbs by making sure the pelvis is square to start with, looking at the anterior superior iliac spines and making sure that the legs are perpendicular to that. We'll then measure from the uh, anterior superior iliac spine to the tip of the medial malleolus and compare the sides, which are equal within half a centimeter, which is entirely normal. If there is a difference, one good thing to do is to pull the knees up, making sure the uh, heels are together and then looking either at the top of the leg or the uh, front of the uh, shin, which will give us an idea as to whether the, any leg length difference is uh, above the knee or below the knee. If the tibia is shorter on the left leg, we would have an appearance such as this. And if the femur was longer on the right leg, we would have an appearance such as this. Okay, just write yourself back down. We need to check extension of the hip as well. So if you could lie over onto your side for me, please. And stabilize the pelvis with my hand. And using the knee uh, rather than the ankle, we'll uh, extend the hip to approximately 15 degrees. This is also a good position for checking power of abduction. If you could lift this leg up for me, please. Okay, just relax it back down. And if you could roll over onto your front for me, please. We can check gluteal mass to make sure there's no neurological uh, problems. And also, uh, we can undertake gauges test if there's a rotatory uh, issue by feeling the greater decanter and rotating the leg out. This is normal at approximately 15 degrees. Okay, thank you for letting yourself over onto your back, please. Thank you. Having examined the hip joint fully, we need to examine the, uh, the spine and the knee for completion to ensure that we're not missing some pathology that's coming from either above or below the hip.